Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, Sham, scoop time. All right, last week you reported that Zach Levine and the Bulls have a openness about possibly finding some sort of a trade situation. Um, then we saw some stuff over the weekend blowing off post game. Not very happy. I don't know if you guys all saw this, but it, it was a actual certified blow off of a post game interview. Um, are we going to see a deal done sooner rather than later? Yeah, I, this is <laughs> classic. Oops. Are we going to see a deal done sooner rather than later? Yeah, for, for this situation, I actually reached out to Rich Paul, his agent <laughs> at Clutch Sports, and, and asked him about it. And Rich Paul's quote to me was, is being blown out of proportion. That actually happens more times than not. It's just the timing of it with the trade talks makes it out to something it's not. Players run away avoiding post-game interviews all the time. This does happen from time to time. Some get caught on camera. Some don't. There's always a push and pull. Some guys don't even want to talk after games. But... No, no matter any of that, basically where this stands with Zach Levine and the Bulls is for the first time, Zach Levine has shown an openness for a trade. I think the Bulls are also in the same boat and seeing the market and seeing what is out there for Zach Levine. We've been talking for the last couple of years about the Bulls. Which direction are they going? Are they going to finally look to retool? Look for the Lakers, Heat, 76ers, Raptors, all expected to have level of, of interest in Zach Levine. The, the thing here, though, is, is there's, there's going to be a delay of some sort. Like, a team like the Lakers, they're not going to be able to make a move with D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, guys like that until December, January. So there are these trigger dates in the calendar where a guy like D'Angelo Russell, he can't be traded until December 15th. Rui Hachimura can't be traded until January 15th. Uh, but this is a massive contract Zach Levine's on. Two, this is the second year of a five-year, $215 million deal. <laughs> So this is one of the best contracts in the NBA you can make a case. And so which team is going to be there to take that on? Um, I love when people are in trade talks and then we start to dissect their clothing choices, Chandler. So here we have Zach Levine wearing an L.A. hat after the Bulls loss on Wednesday. Um, do we like him as a Laker? Uh First of all, the post-game interview, Sean, that was crazy. And usually you don't turn down the on-the-court interviews in front of everybody <laughs> because even if he's that. not in trade rumors, it's a bad look to do that and, like, to kind of storm out like that. So, like, this, this I wouldn't say, is the norm. Yes, the press conference, yes, taking a shower, not speaking to the media, just dipping out of the locker room. <laughs> that, that's common. I've played that game before. On-the-court there. Different. Yeah, sure. He made it worse. Would be great. <laughs> he definitely made it worse. The Lakers would be great, but like Sean said, I think it's gotta have to be later in the season where you yeah. put a D up in the trade, you put um a Rui in the trade, and then yeah, I think that they would Im immensely make that team better. Um but yeah, as far as his hat, like I, I wear Yankee hats all the time. I don't like How Yankees. How dare you? I you don't even wait, hold up. You don't like the Yankees and you wear a Yankee uh, hat? I'm a Dodger fan all day. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's now we're reaching. We're reaching if we're looking at the guy's hat. I don't think we're reaching. I also think we need to really get into the fact that you wear a hat of a team you don't even like. That's weird. It's called well, fashion. No. I call fashion. <laughs> Shut up. Just, just the color, Michelle. It matches the shirt. <laughs> yeah, That's so goes, weird. It. Are you in That's agreement, it. Lou? Like, as a Laker, but obviously we have to wait till December, January. Uh, I like I would see him with the Lakers. I also like him with Philly as well. You know, Philly has established themselves with Joel and Maxi. Give him another guy that that can stretch that floor out. Give him another playmaker. I, I like him with Philadelphia as well. I mean, Philly's doing all right. Do, do they become? I don't know. In your mind, actual title contenders? If you add a Levine. We'll see. I don't. I don't know. I, I really. I really <laughs> like Zach, but yeah. I, no diss to no diss to Zach. I just. I, I really like his game. I really like what he's bringing to the table. But does he take a team from point one to point two? Does is he that much of a difference maker? Remains to be seen. You know, he's one of the marquee guys in Chicago, and I would like to see those guys get it right there with all of the talent that they have on that team, and we haven't seen it. So I'm just not sure. I'm not so. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting, too, because he's with DeMar and Boost. It's also very good, and it's not working. In Two more all-stars. Like so. Yeah, like, so, uh, is, it a, is he a guy that's going to take a good team Philly to really good? I don't know. I think he is what they need. I think he can get that wing option, handle on pick and roll, space the floor, get out of transition. I think 
you know, basketball wise, it, yeah, sounds like it makes sense. But a lot <laughs> of times when you add someone like that too, it can hurt me more than you help. And then it kind of goes back to the Clipper thing that we were talking about before. Don't fix what's not broken. On Philly, it's a little scary. Yeah. And shout out I to know. 40 minutes into the show. Yeah, and that was the first Clipper mention. There, shout out to good day. Yeah. Winning songs yeah. all. Winning songs all. We're winning. Uh, oh, yeah, they play the Spurs tonight and Wednesday. That'll be fun. Um, DeMar DeRozan, by the way, expiring contract. I'm, I'm assuming, Chandler, if you're DeMar DeRozan, are you you're asking for a trade right now behind the scenes? Like, what is the mindset, you think, for him? Yeah, all of them. Him, Boots, Caruso. <laughs> God. Y'all are even saying this. We, yeah, we've been saying this since running back started last year. This was the team that once they got off to a bad start, <clears throat> break it up. They got off to a bad start, and they didn't break it up. Now, all summer long, what do they do? And now this season, same thing. Slow start. Now, all of a sudden, there's there's murmurs. But, yeah, I think this is a team that's going to completely go into, you know, rebuilding. I wouldn't even say tanks. I think they can get a lot of assets, a lot of picks, a lot of solid talent for these guys. Um, I don't think they're going to completely go and tank. But, yeah, I think it's officially time. They're not contending. They're not going to add anything that's going to help them be a you know this contender all of a sudden. Get a, get rid of everybody, kind of start over uh, and go from there. But this is something that I thought they were going to do last year. Demar is one of those guys I actually like on the Lakers. I could, I can see that fit being something that works out. You know, he's placed to, with his back to the basket. He's a methodical player. You know that Lakers team sometimes they come down. They like to work through their sets play through guys out of the post, play through LeBron out of the post, AD sometimes. And so DeMar gives him that look where, you know, you can give the ball to him in a half-court setting and go get a bucket uh, down the stretch of basketball game. So I per- personally, I want to see him get out of Chicago, continue his career, and get on a contender. I think that would be a good fit for him. Well, then that means I got to go to Shams. I mean, we're talking DeMar DeRozan. It feels like this entire Bulls squad is up in the air, maybe fire sale. But w- what's the latest with DeMar DeRozan? DeMar DeRozan's had conversations about an extension with the Bulls, but they are far apart. There hasn't been a deal, obviously, yet. And I think DeMar DeRozan now is at a point where he can sit back and just see how the situation plays out with the team, with Zach Levine, how, how, because clearly that appears to be the focus right now in Chicago is finding a potential landing spot for him. So DeMar DeRozan's in this position now where he can just sit back, watch. He doesn't really have to, I, I think, move. And if a team does make an aggressive bid for him, He'll be right there. And, and I think, obviously, there's a, an openness to really anything in Chicago now. Man, you knew it was bad when they had a players-only meeting after the first game. This is, this is rough. Uh, 